country and we the people on UST Party Radio. Welcome back to UST Party Radio. God, country, and we the people with Kaz Taylor and Bill Gruber. Margie and Jack Flynn are citizens uh, like you, my listening friend, in many ways. Uh, but, but wait until you hear what they're doing to hold politicians and others accountable. Yeah, Sounds like a it. little mystery coming up. <laughs> here, you know? Anyway, Margie, uh, Margie's on the phone, and, and Jack, I guess you're going to be passing the phone back and forth. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your background and uh, how long you guys have been defenders of the U.S. Constitution. Jack and I have been uh, advocates, if you will, um, of the Constitution for over 50 years. We both started as teenagers, although we weren't together at the time and have been standing up for our rights and teaching other people to stand up for their rights for many years. Uh, we teach seminars and workshops. Um, we do lectures and have taught people um, who are very young as well as people that are very old that the Constitution is alive and well and kicking, and it's up to the American people to know this and um, basically to embrace it and enforce it upon errant government, which is what we love doing. You know, this is so so much lacking in our schools these days, I believe, although I, I, I don't know for certain, but the U.S. Constitution is not taught the way it should be, correct? Correct. It is not taught. In fact, it's barely taught at all. It's given sort of a very short shrift. And some of the young people that we had the pleasure to teach over the last oh, five or six years or so, many of whom were actually in college, were absolutely stunned at how little they knew about the Constitution. And um, we are happy to say that when you teach people how to stand up for their rights, it's really not that difficult to face down an errant uh, public official, a judge, or what have you. And we are happy to say that we and our group of people back in New Mexico won over 300 cases in the course of about 10 years against constitutional abuses by government. Well, and you we know, also stopped corporations from abusing the people. Now, if, if you had to defend the health care bill, you'd have to really be a student, just 27, uh, 2,700 pages or so, but you only have to deal with the U.S. Constitution, which is a handful of pages, and uh, really the founders made it pretty simple. I mean, to put it in a nutshell, first of all, the government really doesn't have any right. It has authority. And the authority that the government has is delegated to it in a limited form by and through the people. And the instrument that we use to do that is our Constitution. So that's the bedrock, the foundation of our government. And the Constitution does something else. As you know, when the Bill of Rights was adopted in 1791, that little piece of paper affirmed the rights that we have naturally inherent from our Creator. So the Constitution is, is twofold. It limits the power that government has to do anything that can harm us. It specifically delegates what government cannot do. And what is not delegated in the Constitution is therefore prohibited by it. Margie Flynn and her husband, Jack. In fact, let's pass the phone to Jack and we'll ask him a few questions and we'll bring you right back. Okay, Margie? I'll put, I'll put him right on. So right. Uh, you're carrying this this uh, zeal with you about embracing the Constitution. How well received are you in Maine in that area? We've just moved here, but the people are really very happy that we're here, or, or at least many of them. Uh -huh. And they are embracing the Constitution because they're very dissatisfied with the government here. Even in Maine, huh? Yes, I oh, absolutely. A lot, a lot of people that are conservative that are not in that air, New England area may write off Maine as too liberal to even make any inroads. The government is liberal, but the people are not, which is kind of a misnomer. Interesting. And hopefully hopefully we'll change that. And what we have, the reason we called you folks is because we have an idea, a proposal for the next series of elections in this country that, in our belief, could change the nature of the elections and give us the correct constitutional candidates we need. Explain it to us. And, and the reason we did this, very briefly, is one of the leading candidates for governor in Maine is a Republican conservative. And we gave a friend of his a proposal on this line. And shortly after that, the Republican Party, get this, the Republican Party in Maine adopted the constitutional platform that we suggested to this candidate. Okay? Now, the idea is this, and it's very simple. Have every candidate in this nation, for every office in this nation, sign a constitutional affidavit stating that he will uphold the Constitution as the supreme law of the land, and anything that conflicts with the Constitution 
in his purview, whether it be as a governor, a representative, or a senator, he will not support and he will oppose. That's not, that's not, dis- not, that's not dissimilar to the oath they take when they're elected. Yes, but none of them follow it, okay? We've won well over 300 cases in the Mexico courts by enforcing the oath on judges and prosecutors. We've also, in New Mexico, removed probably two dozen uh, public officials, police, mayors, that judges that were really opposed to the rights of the people. You have the judicial branch to interpret what the Constitution says. So when, no, when, when no. there's a gray, is there ever a gray area, and they where the where the uh, you know the judiciary doesn't is in the process of uh, re- revising the interpretation of the Constitution. First of all, there is remember what uh, we all believe. The Constitution is the authority. When authority is not delegated, then it's prohibited. And the authority not delegated, okay, to public officials is reserved to the states or to the people, pursuant to the Tenth Amendment. And there's nothing in the Constitution, in the Constitution that speaks of interpretation. We deal in the law as the law is written, and we try to enforce the law as the law is written. So our position is this, and, and you're correct, that the affidavit is similar to the oath, but no one upholds the oath. They take the oath on one hand, and they break it on the other hand, whereas a constitutional affidavit, as a requirement for office for every candidate in this nation, would publicly hold the candidate to his oath, and to the constitutional mandates contained therein. Now, if we did this by and through an affidavit, that affidavit could be used to remove that candidate if elected, and if he did not follow the oath and did not abide by the constitutional positions contained therein. I understand. It's it's being well received in Maine. It's being well received by certain people everywhere. And I think, gentlemen, this is the type of thing that if the American people were to embrace it and require it, they would be able to take back the power that they gave up a long, long time ago. In a, in a, word, the, in a word, Jack and Margie, that word is accountability. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Accountability and responsibility. We as the people have not really held our government accountable or responsible for anything. So you hit it right on the, on the nail head. We must hold these people accountable. And the way to do that, in my opinion, is to expand the oath into a constitutional affidavit. And if we were to do this, as I say, in every election across the nation, I think we would have a a very, very different type of election because I think we can all agree that even if we had all seats vacant and running for in both the Senate and the House, and we had 535 new candidates, we wouldn't have much change in Washington, D.C. at all because we'd elect the same people with the exception of a few true constitutionalists. We've got one minute left, and uh, on behalf of Margie and you, Jack Flynn, uh, give about a 30-second word of encouragement to our listening friends and how they can find out more about you. Well, first of all, our... our, um, Our organization is called Citizens of the American Constitution. And we have uh, websites or we have emails, and probably the best is takebackourrights at yahoo.com. We'll send out information to anyone who's who's requesting it. And I think if we all get behind this affidavit, we can change the elections in America, gentlemen. Innovative and logical. Thank you, uh, both Margie and Jack Flynn. For this and uh, citizens of the American Constitution dot org, Bill. Terrific, and and the other address is uh, take back our rights at yahoo dot com, and, and what a uh, abs- absolutely makes <laughs> yeah so much sense. So much I, sense. I, I can't stand it. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you wonder why it's not being implemented. And good luck to them. And I'm 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 certainly behind it as well. As we broadcast from wsradio.com, the worldwide leader in internet talk. <laughs>